This video is sponsored by AliExpress, but I'll talk more about that later. Tesla is getting into the LFP battery business and in true Elon fashion, they are developing their own more efficient and lower cost LFP battery cathode material manufacturing methods. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. I came across a Tesla patent application that was recently published that described a new lithium iron phosphate cathode materials processing method that is supposed to be better than the existing methods. And this makes sense because Tesla is always trying to improve their processes when they get into a specific market. And this appears like it's gonna be no different when they get into manufacturing their own LFP batteries. But before I dive into some of these details, I do want to briefly remind you that back in 2022, during an investor conference call, Drew Baglino mentioned pursuing iron cathode supplies. Then in 2023, it was reported that Tesla was pursuing a partnership with CATL to license their battery technology, which was assumed to be their LFP battery technology, and build a US-based battery factory. Then in late January of 2024, it was then reported that Tesla would be localizing some LFP production here in the United States with help from CATL. However, in that particular instance, these batteries were reportedly going to be used in their Megapack energy storage devices. Thus, those batteries would be prismatic in their format and not Tesla's 4680 batteries. With that being said, I do believe Tesla is going to bring LFP batteries back to their vehicles in the United States. Not only again, probably for the Model 3, but I believe some of their new vehicles. Like for example, the Cybercab, the rear wheel drive Cybertruck, possibly even the 300 mile range semi-truck. And I believe it could also make sense for the Robovan. So once again, I believe that Tesla is going to bring back LFP battery technology to their vehicles in the USA, but that's going to require, because of the current tariff situation and other situations, that's going to require these batteries to be manufactured in the United States. And excitingly, according to this recent post on X by The Limiting Factor, it looks like Tesla has been actively working on and running trials with LFP cathode materials for the last three years. This information comes from the LinkedIn profile of a staff materials engineer at Tesla. And according to Jordan's analysis in this post, quote, one of the test batches was 100 tons, which by my estimate is a 15 to 20 megawatt hour batch of cathode material or enough for several hundred vehicles. Jordan also added, quote, that is Tesla has everything they need to produce LFP battery cells in house. That includes potentially prismatic LFP cells with a wet coating process from Nevada, 4680 LFP cells with a dry coating process from Austin. So based on this information, it looks like Tesla may start using their own LFP batteries in the not too distant future. Now the Tesla patent application that I'm going to dive into and focus on in this video specifically talks about one of the elements that's used in manufacturing the battery, and that's the actual lithium iron phosphate cathode material, making that particular material in a more efficient way. As a reminder, Tesla is in the process of setting up their cathode materials processing plant next to Gigafactory Texas. And while that particular facility is likely set up for nickel cathode manufacturing, because that's what they are manufacturing in Texas, nickel-based 4680 batteries, Tesla will likely use a lot of their learnings from processing these nickel-based cathode materials and use that for a future iron-based cathode materials processing plant. With all that background in mind, I do want to dive into the new Tesla patent application. But before I do that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by AliExpress. AliExpress is a marketplace that allows you to buy directly from suppliers and manufacturers from around the world. And the site includes a wide selection of items from almost every category you can imagine and often at a price lower than you can get elsewhere. If you've never taken the time to explore the vast variety of items that you can find on that site, you definitely need to do so. I know I personally have been very amazed at the wide selection of items that I've come across on the AliExpress website. For example, I got this Insta360 Ace Pro action camera from a highly rated seller on AliExpress, and I plan to use it to film some future EV reviews. For my testing so far, I've been very impressed with this camera, and it's going to be especially great for filming high quality video footage from the actual test drive inside future EVs. 
Make sure to click the link in the video description to get amazing products like this Insta360 Ace Pro action camera on AliExpress. And if you use the discount codes that I'm going to add to the video description, you'll be able to get additional discounts on many items. For full disclosure, that link I'm going to put in the video description is an affiliate link and AliExpress does give me a commission off of your purchase at no extra cost to you, which does help support this channel. With that being said, let's now dive into this Tesla patent application. When it comes to battery manufacturing, the cathode part of the battery usually has the most expensive components in it. And it's a really big area where you can see huge savings in battery manufacturing if you can optimize those processes. That's one of the big reasons why Tesla is building out a cathode materials manufacturing facility at Gigafactory, Texas. And that's why I believe they're also interested in improving the current processes for manufacturing LFP cathode battery materials. This patent application makes it clear that, quote, current methods of cathode manufacturing require a large number of steps and expensive apparatuses. Thus, new methods that reduce or eliminate processing steps in the manufacturing of battery raw materials may aid to decrease the end use cost of batteries. The wording then goes on to make very clear here that this process is focused on iron based cathode materials and it describes in a very simplistic way some of the materials that are needed and the processes to manufacture lithium iron phosphate cathode materials. One of the important steps in manufacturing these LFP cathode materials is a step called calcination. Based on my research, calcination involves heating up the LFP materials at high temperatures and the end result is an LFP cathode material that has the proper crystal structure and particle size. The reason I specifically bring up this calcination stage is because I believe this is one of the big areas that Tesla is improving with this new process. When it comes to nickel-based cathode processing, it looks like the calcination process can take 12 plus hours sometimes. But when it comes to LFP battery materials, it looks like that calcination process can be between two and six hours commonly. Obviously running a high heat furnace for two to six hours, or in the case of nickel-based cathode materials, 12 plus hours requires a lot of energy. So if you're gonna focus in on a very high value portion of the cathode manufacturing process, this calcination stage appears to be a good one. And in this patent application, once again, describing Tesla's new, more efficient method in manufacturing LFP cathode materials, it's written, quote, advantageously, the disclosed process may have a high material efficiency, lower calcination time, and help reduce or eliminate corrosion. It also appears like Tesla is going to incorporate their more efficient solvent-free manufacturing process that they're incorporating in their nickel-based cathode materials processing. It looks like that can be used with this LFP materials processing as well. As a reminder, during Tesla's battery day event, they showed what the typical cathode process looked like and then compared that to their much more efficient process that does not use a bunch of solvents. As was described here, this process required around 66% less of an investment. It saved around 76% in process costs and resulted in zero wastewater. The exciting thing is that based on what is described here, it looks like not only are they going to make this process more efficient with once again, I believe, an improved calcination process and in addition, the likelihood of them using their solvent-free manufacturing process, but the end result, LFP cathode material, is apparently going to be of higher quality after these processes. On that note, specifically it's written here, quote, as demonstrated by figure 16, the percentage of iron in the lithium channels of the lithium iron phosphate material prepared by the process described herein, such as samples one through six, was less than that of the percentage of iron in the lithium channels of commercially available lithium iron phosphate. Now I'm not a chemist, nor do I pretend to be. But based on my research, it looks like you want to avoid iron particles as much as possible in the lithium channels. From what I can tell, there's always going to be a little bit of iron left in the lithium channels, but you want that percentage to be very low. The iron atoms that occupy these lithium channels are considered an impurity, and higher percentages of iron in the lithium channels do negatively impact the optimal electrochemical performance of the end-use battery that uses those cathode materials. When it comes to how this iron impurity percentage compares with the materials produced using Tesla's processes versus what is seen in commercially available LFP cathode materials, for Tesla's samples shown in figure 17A, that percentage was 0.817%, and for figure 17B, that number was 0.923%. This compares to the commercially available lithium iron phosphate tested in figure 17B, which is about 1.584%. So with Tesla's processes here, the end result ends up having less impurities in the lithium channels 
than the commercially available sample that they compared this to. So in true Tesla fashion, when they decide to manufacture something, they work to do it as efficiently as possible. And I definitely look forward to Tesla manufacturing not only their own LFP battery materials, but also their own LFP finished batteries as well. And I hope to see several LFP equipped Tesla models in the USA market in the coming years. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I would like to say thank you to AliExpress for sponsoring this video and for supporting this channel. Once again, make sure that you check out all the great items that AliExpress has to offer. And if you use that affiliate link that I put in the video description, when you make a purchase using that link, AliExpress will give me a commission at no extra cost to you, which helps support this channel. I'd also like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.